Becoming homeless is difficult, especially when you have two, two ch young children. Carnival, the Halloween Carnival, yeah. the Spring Carnival. Yeah. I think those are all like carnivals. <laughs> Before working here, I really, you know, I had a much different view on what family homelessness would look like. And if you, especially if you do not have a strong support network, literally anyone could be homeless. Yeah. They fixed that building so quick, huh? Oh, I know. It's less than a year, right? Oh, uh, yeah, that's changing skylines, changing demographics. Um, I am um, Margaret and um, I live here in the city now. It's a long process. Um, you have to be in a waiting list. While I'm in waiting, I was in the shelter. The situation was very difficult for me because it's a, I have a domestic violence case and um, until now it's very hard for me to talk about it. Survivors of domestic violence, that's a um, a big chunk of the families that have moved in here, as well as new immigrant um, refugee families and eviction, yes. My abuser, he just couldn't stop, you know, like not, you know, harassing or following me and the kids around. I believe I was like three months pregnant at that time with my second um, child and he physically hurt me. And I said that if he if he hurt me and, I, and he knows that I'm pregnant, that means that that baby is not important to, to him. All I know is, you know, if I'm going to go back, it's going to be for the worst. Do you want therapy? Oh, yeah, play therapy. Yeah. yeah. The, the so. One of my shelters in the East Bay, um, somebody broke in um, and they identified similar um, feature from my ex. So. I have to be moved out of the East Bay and sent here in San Francisco. Financially, at that time, I'm completely broke. I, I know I already have used my um, savings going places to places at that time. And um, it's, it's difficult. I could not leave my children in a daycare and things like that because I you know, I have this thinking of one day, what if he found out where the daycare is and he took them. You know, my, even though my children are young, it's like so sad to see them like sleeping in the car and just playing in the car because I can't bring them to the park. I'm scared that somebody is following me, you know, like them. So, you feel helpless, you know, like you don't trust anybody. Yeah, even though, oh, just go to the shelter, it's going to be safe, and things like that. I don't know if these people can be trusted, or am I going to be safe in here? Is this going to be like a two-week two stay of this, things like that, that it's not going to be certain again for me and the family? The longer a family stays in shelter, the more negative effects that it has on a family. Studies have you know, proven that and shown that, and so has personal stories. We sing songs. Mm -hmm. We sing songs on um, dinner table, and I, my, my son was like, Mom, can, do you still remember the song? I said, no, I don't think. <laughs> like, this is actually my first time, you know, going to admit that where I, you know, learn how to trust again, even in a courthouse. <laughs> They send, you know, their um, caseworker with me going to the courthouse and I was like, I, I don't know if I'm going to do this or, and it's like, you could do this, you, you know, like, you can face him, you can win this case and I had the courage to face him in a court and won my case, yeah. I got the full custody of the kids. And I'm glad that my children, you know, um, after that therapy session, you know, it's, it's good. I was worried because my son at that age was starting to hit the baby sister and, you know, um, he thought that it's okay. And I said, no, it's not okay, you know. Um, I said that, you know, we have to take care of each other because we are family, you know, we don't hurt each other. We might probably argue for some reason, but not, not hitting, because mm -hmm. hitting is not good, yeah. Mm-hmm.
the studies that have been conducted show that when you have an interaction and communication with your child where there's reciprocity, where I talk to my child in a way that asks their opinion, asks open-ended questions, we have a dialogue. I say something, you say something. The better off they'll be in terms of academic achievement, security, success in life. You know, we see a lot of trauma and with that um, comes behavioral issues at school, academic issues, um, self-esteem issues. As we start to uh, mature a little bit and we're getting into adolescence, we start to think of ourselves in terms of how other people see us. That's why we think so much about our peers, because we're so worried about what our friends are going to think of us. And so it's really important then that if a child isn't good at something, that they know that they're good at other things but they have to know that they're good at things to build that self-esteem because otherwise they're gonna compare themselves to others and feel less than, and they're not going to have a good self-worth. The stability of not moving around all the time made my children more safer too. Um, they become more, um, how do you call this, um, confident about themselves, you know, that they're not gonna be in two weeks, they're going to be worrying where we're going to go and things like that. So we count on routine because with routine, we feel safe. That's why in preschools, we post a schedule of the day because children need to know what the routine is because they'll be willing to go explore if they know the routine. Um, they have a play therapy and as a family, we do go together, you know, and we talk things and how the kids can heal themselves, you know. Even though they're very young, they could tell that everything is not right, you know, and I don't want them to be worrying like me, like crazy, you know. Um, and so I just want them to have, have a happy childhood. Job loss is a huge reason for family homelessness. And I became a city and county employment last year. I just got laid off, but I've been applying again over and over to, you know, um, different positions, even for a bus driver. A lot of low-wage jobs that our families find themselves in um, tend to be part-time as a way for the employer to, you know, save money on employees. And working multiple part-time jobs is not really sustainable, or just working one part-time job is not sustainable. In one aspect, a temp job is better than nothing, but at the same time, once that temp job is over, you're left kind of back in square one. I've been applying for a city and county job actively. Rafael's again, with the help of Sophia, my, my employment specialist has been helping me. Spanning multiple hours for low paying jobs and just the physical um, and emotional stress that that puts on somebody is, it's really a difficult situation to be in. It's, it's, it's going to be hard, you know, but I, I want that stability for my children. So when you set that goal, no matter what, how hard it is, you're still going to do it. Yeah. If I am lost, my children are going to be lost, you know, and I don't want that. I really don't. Yeah, I, I want to live on a positive side now, you know. Um, not just, it feels so good, you know, like when people are helping you and they see that you also you know, to become a successful, then that's really good. Everybody's happy, especially my children too, <laughs> yeah. As, as hard as it is, go find somebody to talk to and, and, you know, and build your life again.